The Bear Essentials Podcast gives older bears a place to gather for real talk regarding topics and issues that they can relate to. Here at The Bear Essentials, we aren't just having conversations. We are looking to provide actionable intelligence through real-life experience and expertise of our guests. Our mission is to build a strong community that elevates and motivates people to go beyond their limiting beliefs by helping them realize that getting older is not an excuse to hibernate on their goals, but a reason to work harder. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I am your host, Charles Wallace. Today's guest is a two-time Ironman finisher. And the second time he completed the Ironman, he had cancer. Today, he joins us to talk about his toughest challenge, and that is his recovery from colon cancer. So please, without further ado, let's welcome Ron Smith to the show. But first, a word from our sponsor. Wolfinger Consulting, experts who have achieved real results for their clients, including complying efficiently and successfully with overwhelming discovery orders, passing difficult third-party security audits, and deploying bleeding-edge technology platforms to control and preserve corporate information. Let them show you what Wolfinger Consulting can do for you. Be sure to check out their webpage at wolfingerforensics.com. Ron, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Hey, Chal. How you doing? Nice to see you again. Listen, man, I'm actually really glad to see you. I know, um, and we'll talk about a little bit, I had you on before. Uh, your episode was amazing last time, and I'll just get it out of the way right now. We're not going to rehash all of that because I got some stuff I want to talk about with Ron now and moving forward but if anybody's interested the bear essential episode bear essentials episode with ron that was called um iron man fights cancer please check it out you you won't regret it if you haven't seen it so um we'll touch a little bit on some of that but we're gonna we're gonna take it from uh, a point in ron's life uh from a few months back to now and moving forward so ron that being said um We'll start out brief introduction for those who may not have seen you previously on my show. Okay. Uh, Ron Smith. Uh, I went to high school with Chow at North Catholic in uh, Philadelphia. I live in Morristown, New Jersey right now. Um, I have an employee benefits business, you know, with my daughter, you know, uh, we, we do a lot of uh, work with companies regarding their, you know, insurances and, um, uh, you know, help them manage that and just uh, like to be active and get out there doing uh, some triathlons and some marathons and just trying to, you know, make the world a little bit better place. So I'm going to start right now for the audience. Ron is extremely humble and he's extremely motivational. And I don't think he realizes how many people he impacts throughout his daily life with some of his content and the things he does. So I, I want to just say that to him right off the bat. Um, also, I think he's underselling a little bit. Like I always expect Ron does. He undersells a little bit on what he does. So, um, but Ron, in all seriousness, for those that didn't see that episode, I won't want to, you know, we won't go crazy with it, but let, let's get into that a little bit. So you've completed, you complete an Ironman, you're getting ready to do another one. And a few days before that, Let's tell the audience what what happened. So uh, I um, basically what had happened, kind of like a rebirth, was you know turning fifty. I was doing everything that I was supposed to do. You know, went and got a colonoscopy. That was back in April. Everything was fine. You know, say they said, hey, we'll we'll come back and see you in five years. So during the training, um, one of the things I noticed was like I had some bleeding. You know, and I thought, okay, maybe I hurt myself by being on the bike too long. You know, so I went back. I saw the doctor. He was like, oh, let's do a kind of a follow up colonoscopy. Um, And really what he said was, you know, we missed it. You know, so it was a week before, you know, my second Ironman that, you know, they had just told me that I was going to have, you know, that I had cancer. And I had asked the doctor, I'm like, can I still compete? you know, since the race is next week. And he was basically, well, you know, you might as well, because you're not going to be doing one for a long time. So 
uh, that, you know, that kind of went into the whole mindset of, you know, on a, you know, a triathlon like that, you spend a lot of alone time, you know, sitting inside yourself. So, you know, I, I had 16 hours to kind of think about my new uh, upcoming challenge. Yeah. And, and for the audience, again, it hasn't seen it. Ron did complete that Ironman. So congrats on that. So now we, we fast forward some now, one of the last things Ron said to me when he was on the show, we talked about after the recording was wrapped up, he said, I'm going to come back on the show and we're going to talk about my comeback. So here we are. We're going to talk a little bit about the comeback, but obviously before the comeback, there's a lot that happens. And Ron being a very resilient human being, I wanted to get into that, Ron. So what you find you complete the triathlon now i know this hasn't been easy for you so what what has it been like these last few months as far as the the cancer the surgery the treatment and the road to recovery yeah, so it was uh, you know obviously it was challenging you know and uh uh you know so treatment started with chemo and radiation which um you know there was a couple different phases of the whole treatment and they all sucked in different ways <laughs> You know, um, you know, the radiation in the beginning w- was a little bit tough because, you know, you know, as the, um, you know, the radiate my the radiation doctors would joke and say, oh, you know, people think that we don't turn the machine on for the first couple of weeks, you know, but then, you know, afterwards it really turns on because, I mean, you go from you go for treatment like every single day for a period of time, you know, but th- towards the end, you, you know, you're getting almost like third degree burns in that area that they're you know, that they're shooting with it. And it's one of those things where it's like a struggle that you have to get back on the table every day because you know that it's only going to get worse. So, you know, that was, um, that was the, you know, the, you know, the, the first phase. So, you know, once you healed from the radiation, then it was the, um, the surgery, you know, and the surgery, you know, that was, that was mental and physical um, because part of that was I had to have um, an ileostomy bag, which basically it was a bag, you know, on my stomach. That's where I would go to the bathroom through. And, um, you know, outside of the pain of just dealing with it, you know, it was just like an outward sign that you couldn't like escape. Um, you, you know, like, you know, I was going you know, I went to the beach, you know, but, you know, during the summer and, you know, that's where I spent the entire summer because I mean, you know, I had to really start to stay away from people. So I would just lay down there and, you know, when you're walking around around and you have a bag of poop on your, you know, stomach, it's, Mm. it's, it's a little bit challenging, you know, and, uh, you know, and then came, you know, you know, they did the reversal, you know, and part of the reversal surgery, what they do is they test, you know, the lymph nodes around, you know, the, you know, the, where they're treating you. Um, and really, you know, when I went into this, it was, you know, the, the story that I was getting was your stage two, which pretty contained after treatment, after the reversal surgery, you're good. Well, here, you know, they had found that the cancer had spread to some of the lymph nodes. So the, you know, that made it stage three, which required, you know, a round of chemo to kind of really combat, um, you know, to make sure that they got it. So it, it extended the time period for the treatment. And um, it just it, it was just challenging, you know, because, you know, the one thing that I was saying was, you know, do, going through that whole process, it really just broke you down to, you, you know, your, you know, your basic, you know, it, what you can be, because I mean, you know, I, I had lost my hair. Like I wore a baseball cap for six months because I looked like Charlie Brown. Like I had like two strings of hair. Um, you know, the infusion center, like they had, you had a port in your, in your chest that, you know, that's where they would go in there when they would, you know, give me the infusion of the chemotherapy. Um, so some days you couldn't really shower too easily because you, you know, you had, you were attached to this bag with chemo in there. Um, and the, you know, the funniest thing part of that was when they give you the, the chemotherapy, they give you this big yellow container and it's full with all this stuff and they call it your oh shit kit. Mm. And what I mean by you know, that is if any of the, any of the contents of the chemotherapy bag leak, there's like gloves and, and like a, um, 
like dressing and, and, and they're like anything that this touches, you have to throw out because it's radioactive material. And I'm thinking, oh, great, you're pumping this into me. Mm hmm. Yeah, every every two weeks, you're, you know, you don't want it to touch the, you know, the mattress, but you know, God forbid, you know, it's being pumped into me. So it's, uh, it was a little bit challenging mentally, you know, and yeah, uh, it, it just, you know, it gave you some good time to reflect. <laughs> yeah, and Ron, I, I just want to say too to the people because obviously you and I are friends outside of this, and we went to school together, and I've known you a lot of years, but you know, I think. I've always respected you, but what I've respected even more was the way you've handled this, right? Like you, all that you just described, honestly, I would have never, I knew it wasn't easy what you were going through, right, man? But when I would see some of the content you would, you were, it looked like during those times you were even making more of an effort to try to help keep other people positive and you were always seemed like you were focused on making sure you were still putting out positivity into this world, even though your situation was, it was very difficult. Now by doing that round, I want to ask, does that, does that kind of help your own mindset going through this, like being positive and putting that positivity out? And is it in a way kind of keeping you positive? Yeah, it, it really was. It, it, you know, it was more mental therapy um, because, you know, during that whole process, you know, it, it was challenging because like I said, I mean, you're, you know, you have a poop bag on your, on your stomach. I mean, sometimes you would have accidents and, you know, leakage. And like I said, you're losing your hair and you're losing your identity. And, you know, here I am going from, um, you know, being able to do a, you know, a, a 16 hour race to try to try to do a walk around the, the hallway, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, how far you can fall down um you know the other thing is also like i wanted to be upbeat and positive because people are watching you know i have my wife and daughter and family watching and everybody was really awesome and i figured this could go one of two ways like i could crawl in my bed and just you know just hide from the world and everybody probably would have been okay with that and they would you know they they would have said okay hey, you know no problem with that but in reality, I was just like, you know what, let me try to, you know, be positive and have more of a, you know, a better outlook on life. So that way we could, you know, maybe use this as a, like a teaching experience for my kids. Yeah, and I remember vividly, man, I was driving my daughter to work. We're at the light. We're at a light and a message came, text message from you. And it said, my comeback started. I walked from the, from the bed, from my room down the hall. <laughs> Yeah. And it it made me so like happy. I know, and I know I was like, "Yep, here he comes!" Right? We're 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 going. He's going now. It, it started. So that was that was nice to see. And Ron, I, I wanted to ask too, like knowing what you do for a living, and I had you on even before we talked about like what you do professionally as far as you know financials and benefits and things like that, and knowing what you kind of talk people through and what you're going through, like how difficult was that? Like, I mean, as upbeat as you were, as strong as you are, and we all know how strong you are. I mean, how are the doubts, man, as far as at some point thinking, am I, am I going to get through this? Right. D did you ever question that? Yeah. I, I think it's kind of, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be normal if I didn't have, you know, thoughts you know that weren't so great you know like because you had to do you know like an accounting of you know the like you know i do like help people through problems and part of my job is basically reverse engineering solutions for people so i think my job kind of helps me just understand that problems are just they're not and they're just roadblocks of you know things that you and puzzles that you have to figure out so, you know, but luckily, like I had some things in place, you know, all my insurances were good, you know, like, and I was able to, you know, financially just be able to take care of myself for the year, you know, whereas, you know, sometimes like if I had to, um, you know, let's say, I'm not sure some people are as, as prepared. So luckily, like being in the, you know, in the business, I was able to kind of make sure that things were okay. And my wife and, and kids didn't really, 
you know, have to worry about like, oh my God, what's going to happen? You know, are we going to lose the house? Are we going to lose the shore house? Or, you know, so these are some of the things that luckily life just kind of worked out that we were okay. But, you know, but I did have to kind of lay down of like, okay, hey, you know, if I walk out the door, these are the things that are going to walk in to replace me, you, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as we talk about the positivity, I know I can only imagine that during this, and this might sound like a strange question, but I have a reason for it because I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Do you have any vivid like memories or points where you went, it got the darkest time where you were like, hit your rock bottom. It's it's really dark mentally. And then you start to kind of rebound from it. Did that ever happen? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't even have to think about it because there, there was actually two occasions and it was more of um, like when I had the bag, because normally when, if, if anybody has never had it, it's more of like, you know, you go, you know, this, this contraption lets you go to the bathroom. You know, but the problem is you can't feel it like there's no nerve. So it's just attaching. So the habit was like I would always tap my stomach to find out, like, is it full? So that way I can make a way to the bathroom to you know, empty it, you know, you know. But one morning I had woken up and I guess I must have rolled over on it and whatever. And I woke up and I was just covered, mm. it, it, you know, and I and. Like, you know, and I had to yell for my wife because she had already, you know, she was, she was gone and she was probably making coffee already. And, you know, here I am like, you know, Mr. Strong, you know, Iron Man, like whatever guy. And I'm just laying on the bed, like help, asking my wife for help because I didn't want to move and make it more of a mess, you, you know, and that thing. And then the one time that I remembered I was driving up from the, um, you know, the shore, because I was just, you know, I was kind of getting back to work or whatever. And all of a sudden you're just smelling like, oh, I smell some. And and here, like the the bag was leaking. And so here I am sitting on 295 traffic with a lap full of poop. Mm. So, so, you know, so that's why it's just, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's normal. It's okay. No big deal. But you, you know what, unless, you know, I had I hadn't pooped myself since I was a and baby in diapers. You know, here I am, and I'm thinking I'm not this old. Like, why am I? Yeah. Why am I dealing with this? You, you know, so I it it does give you that little bit of like, what the hell? You, you know. So, when that kind of stuff happens, though, right? I think that what I, why I asked you that is because I know then there's the opposite. So when did you kind of start to? Look, I think we all do, and you had big. You had a good reason to do it. Have a pity party, feel sorry for yourself. I think we all do it. And then I hear a story like yours, and I go, "What the f am I complaining about?" Right. So, when's that moment though, where you kind of start to feel the, that kind of switch, where it's like, you know what, I'm done with this. It's time to start. I'm, I'm I am pushing through this, and I am going to be around for my family. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, I would spend a lot of time by myself, obviously, because like I, I, either I was laying in bed or, you know, in the mornings, I would like always make a, a purpose of getting out of bed and like watching the sunrise while I was down the shore. Because most of the time I was asleep by seven o'clock. And, you know, I felt like, okay, if I'm not down the shore going to the bars and hanging out with my friends, I might as well take advantage of, you know, going and seeing the sunrises. And, you know, they were, you know, it was beautiful because it gave me some time to kind of reflect and kind of, you know, understand. And part of that kind of like came back to me and said, you know what, I have a second chance of life because if I didn't go back for my follow-up, they told me to come back in five years, mm. you know, and if I was stage three, literally four months after my, you know, my first colonoscopy, what would it look like in five years? Mm. I probably, I probably wouldn't, you know, yeah. I wouldn't be around long. So well, I'm glad that you did go, man. Cause I think obviously not just for your family, man, I think you are someone who makes it dude. Honestly, I, I know, I know we're friends, man, but I truly mean this. You're the kind of guy that makes this world a better place, man. And we need more people like you. So, um, truly happy that you still are here so yeah. yeah um all right so that's kind of the um you know that part 
so now you're you're kind of through the recovery. We talked a little bit before we got on the show. So let, let's fast forward again a little bit. How are things feeling, you know, as just a few weeks ago now, as far as your recovery and the way you're starting to move forward? So, I mean, the good news is, you know, that the cancer is gone. You know, I had my first follow-up colonoscopy and that was all clear. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that's kind of lingering is I have what they call extreme neuropathy. Um, so basically what that is, is I can't feel my hands or anything from the knees down. So like I can't feel my feet, my calves, anything like that. I just don't have any feeling in them. Um, and I went to a neurologist and they thought it might be, you know, spinal compression and, you know, they put me on B12 shots and, you know, but basically, you know, after last week, they were saying it's probably just going to be a couple of years, if not forever. You know, so it's one of those things where this is my new normal. So in reality, there's not a minute that's going to go by that I don't think about cancer because, like I said, I, you know, just anytime I touch something or try to button a shirt or pick up, you know, pick up a penny, I'm not going to be able to, like, I literally have to look at things to pick things up because I don't have the sense of feeling. Mm. Man. And, and, and we'll get into a little bit of what you're trying, what you are hoping to do. But that being said, I want to ask you this. We hear all the time people with, cancer and recovery from cancer about i beat cancer honestly man do you feel like you feel like you beat cancer yet not really it, you know and the funny thing is i i used to you know during this whole thing uh you know i would you know say like you know it was a blessing in disguise you know and my wife would get mad and she still gets mad because she's like oh you still think it's a blessing because like you know all these things that i can't do or you know, I still have problems with certain things and uh, it, it, it's it's a blessing that it, it's healed, you know, and, and it's something that that's but it's also, you know, it. Listen, I'm not the same person that I was a year ago, you know, like before a year ago, like I was the kind of guy I didn't cry for anything, you know, growing up in Philly and like, you know, guys just didn't cry, mm -hmm. you know, but. You know, now at this point, I mean, if you put the Lady Gaga song at the end of the, you know, Top Gun Maverick movie, I'm going to ball like a little baby. You, you know, it's just, you, you know, that's, it, you know, certain things are kind of like, you know, opened up or unlocked, you know, in me. Um, so, you know, so I'm just a little bit different. I think that's OK, though, man. Like it's your you mentioned about your new norm, but I I think I can understand your perspective of, the, well, the blessing in disguise. Right. Because. When I listen to you speak, it sounds like it may all of this may have increased your appreciation for everything and anything, the little things. Right. So the fact that you have that second chance at life that you talked about, have you have you changed your outlook or the way you are with, you know, friends, family, anything like that? Does it does everything mean a little bit more now? Yeah, I mean, it really does. I mean, just, you know, like taking the dog for a walk on it like a cold night and you smell fire like like you like you appreciate that, like every little scent and like, you know, you, you know, you look at the sky more and you appreciate the little things. And I mean, luckily, I was, you know, I had a great support system like I had friends from grade school that came over. I, you know, my, you know, aunts and uncles that. You know, we kind of like hadn't seen in a while, like, you know, everybody was like rushing back into my life, my brothers and sisters, like everybody, you know, I had a really good support staff, you know, people at work were, you know, fantastic. And everybody was there to kind of just let me, you know, focus, you know, on the main thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think I'm glad that you had that, man, because I, I know like talking to you like through it and texting and just looking at your content on social media. I mean, you you made it look like it was probably way easier for you than it was, man, because like the, the, the message and the image you were putting outwardly to the world, it was looking like Ronnie Smith, true fashion, badass, beating the shit out of cancer and I kind of knew, man, like this ain't easy. Um, I knew, 
I mean, I know when we talked about before, man, I had confidence that if anybody was going to come through this, it would be you. And mm -hmm. not even a little bit surprised that we're sitting here talking right now like this. So okay. that being said, I wanted to get into this now because when you reached out to me, I know we had talked before about we want to get you back on the show. You want to come back on the show. But then the other night, and I thought it was great because I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was having some thoughts myself about going into the end of this year, next year. Man, this world really sucks sometimes. What can we do to make it better? And I kid you not, the, the I text from Ronnie about jumping on the show and he wants to talk about something. So, Ron, let's jump into some of that positivity and what you're thinking about and what you want to do. So, you know, part of the, uh, you know, the process was, you know, um, of healing is just kind of like doing the meditation, doing more prayerful things. And, uh, you know, and, and I guess here's the weird thing. Have you ever been, you know, had a thought of like, oh, I really need to call this person or, you know, I, you know, this happened or I, you have this feeling. And then two days later, that person calls you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. You know, so like I watched a lot of YouTube videos about motivational things, and I, I stumbled across this guy, Jack Canfield, who was like one of the co-authors of uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. You know, he's one of the guys. And he was talking about this story of, you know, this guy that he knew that was part owner of the Seattle Seahawks. And, you know, he wasn't really getting any satisfaction out of owning all the stuff. He had jets and planes and, you know, you know wine collections and you know, but he went on his like trip to Bosnia to give wheelchairs to um, kids that were, you know, be, you know, lost their legs to landmines out there. You know, I'm sure it's pretty. And, you know, basically it was saying like it changed his life. And for some reason, it just kind of stuck with me that um, in, in addition to that, somewhere like in our local town, there was a passing, you know, premature passing of this guy that everybody seemed to love. You know, and I'm not really sure of like the story and I, you know, don't want to talk about ill of anybody. But, you know, something happened that he he passed too soon, you, you know, and I also had a, um, you know, I had a nephew that passed away prematurely as well. And, you know, so you have one, you know, segment of society that, you know, we've seen they're struggling and, and you know, they're struggling in silence and there's no help and they're not doing the things that, you know, maybe keep them healthy in life. But then also at the other end of it, I was sitting, you know, for hours at a time in this infusion center where people were fighting to stay alive. So, you know, what my kind of thought was, you know, and I read this book called like the purposeful life. And it was like, I'm saying it's like the purpose project where, you know, I want to kind of do something towards charity work or, or just helping people like on a weekly basis, because, and the reason I'm saying like on a weekly basis is like if it becomes a focus of, of you, it, it just that then it becomes a part of you and you don't let it go because, you know, like most of the time, if you look at, you know, people's lives, they eat the same thing every week. You know, it's Friday's pizza night, Saturday's burgers, Sunday's a big dinner, like it's planned around the Eagles. It's, you know. You couldn't tell, you know, a January, you know, fifth day any different than a June fifth day. You know, everybody falls into the same rut where I just wanted to kind of like if I could help somebody, you know, either be a, like and this isn't just a money thing. You know, obviously there's a lot of charities and there's a lot of people in need, but more of service. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of get people to involve. Um, and I was talking to different people and like somebody reached out and said, oh, you know, hey, my church has this organization. So it's just those little things of, you know, you know, can you open the door for somebody that's, you know, may, maybe struggling or, you know, you go to, you know, you go to Wegmans and there's a short lady that is, keeps looking up at the top shelf and, you know, she wants something there, but she can't get it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be elaborate and you don't have to tell anybody about it, but it's one of those things where I kind of want to start to live by example and say, Hey, if I got a second chance of life, you know, maybe I was just meant to do something a little bit better, you know, or, or, or change things for the better because I, you know, I just, that's the kind of what I feel. And the fact that like I was having that intuition of it, you know, people like I believe in God, some people, you know, higher purpose, higher intelligence, you, you know, intuition, you know, whatever you call it, you know, it's just more of like, 
I, I just think that there's a, you know, ways that people can be just better human beings. So that's kind of what I wanted to do and, and try to like, maybe from a grassroots perspective, just try to like, it's the holidays and everybody like, Oh, toys for tots and um, you know, adopt the family. But in a month after that, everybody forgets about everybody, you know, then it's focusing on themselves and I got to lose weight, save money and nobody focuses on anybody else. So, you know, so it's more of like, that's why I want to kind of do it more, mentally myself, do it more on a consistent, like weekly basis of trying to make an effort to do, you know, something and maybe it'll snowball. Maybe it'll just be me. I don't know. But, you know, if that's the case, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I think you bring up some great points, man, because I think when it comes to and it's unfortunate, man, but I think when it comes to purpose like that and charity and things like that I, I i hate to say it but i think it is there's a seasonal component to it and everybody gets kind of you know that adrenaline for it it feels good to do at certain times of the year but i would say that probably out of 365 days a year there's probably 350 of those days that most people don't think about it you know what i mean like it, it's I, I just, yeah, I think what you're saying is is really something that we could all adopt. And I, listen, I'm here to definitely try to help or get involved in any way. I mean, quite frankly, Ron, when I started this two years ago, it literally was meant to just try to maybe impact some people's lives positively. I just wanted people to see that, you know, an average guy like me could lose a bunch of weight, start a podcast and talk to people that you look great by the way yeah <laughs> oh, listen man you uh i was about to say that to you man considering all you've been through man i wouldn't have known you know you look fantastic so i mean yeah so lastly hearing what you want to try to do knowing what you've been through i mean ron what's your overall outlook right now just on not just on life, but what do you say right now in general to the world about what you've been through and how it might have changed you and how you are looking to have it, have, using it to have a positive impact? I, I, I guess the first thing that I would say is, you know, that everybody should just kind of look at themselves nakedly and just say, OK, hey, you know what? What do I need to be better at? Because. Yeah. <laughs> You know, not to, you know, talk about fi finances, but a lot of times, you know, being in my line of work, you would see people that just, oh, I don't want to look at that. You know, I'll get to that this weekend. So, but in reality, if I didn't have the insurance, let's say the life insurances that I had, I, you know, I wouldn't be able to buy them now and it would be too late. So, you know, do I need a will? Do I need a living will? These, I mean, I don't do any of these things, but, you know, these are the things that I wanted to do. Or, you know, what's my legacy going to look like? Because I went from the guy that I, the only time I went to a doctor was a physical, and that was maybe every couple of years. I never took a prescription, never did anything. Now I got a pillbox. Now I got a Rolodex of neurologists, you know, oncology, you know, like it's just, it just doesn't seem to, and, and that just kind of changed in an instant. And that's what I mean, you know, kind of want to look at is, things do change in an instant and at least I had a strong network to kind of, you know, and, and team to kind of like help me through this. There's a lot of people that don't, you know, so this isn't really about charity. I mean, there's, there could be people struggling in business that are thinking about, you know, hurting themselves just because of money, you know, where, you know, maybe, you know, if you have a local, local, like a local, uh, you know, rotary club or something like that, that maybe kind of says, yeah, hey, you know what? we're not just going to give you money, but maybe we can help you with marketing or like coaching or mm -hmm. getting, you know, just so you know, you're not alone really is where my, you know, thing is because if people feel like they're not alone, then at least it, now they have a little bit of hope. And hope is so strong, man. And I think what you just said about, you know, not feeling alone, because I think, I think when people unfortunately feel alone, it's the hopelessness overtakes them and they start to have no way, no way out. And, and Ron, I think what you said though, is a powerful message, especially for this time of year, because you came face to face with your own mortality. And like you said, you were fighting to live 
And I do think there's a lot of people that get these thoughts, especially around this time of year, man, that they, it's too much and they might not want to live, man. And I think somebody, and they hear this story and like, you know what? There was a guy that had every reason to throw in the towel and he didn't. What, what am I going to throw in the towel for? So I think your story will continue to impact people. Um, so is there an Iron Man in the future anytime? Uh, next November. <laughs> So I guess it's, yeah, we'll probably a week or two before, man, we'll have to have the next episode with Ron Smith and it'll talk about the the true comeback and about how he's ready to take on his next Ironman. So, uh, Ron, okay. we might as well just start penciling you in as a yearly episode or maybe twice a year, man, because it's starting to feel that way, you know? I mean, listen, I- no, don't get any more cancer. I don't want to have you on for that. I want to only <laughs> talk about the Ironman. <laughs> <laughs> okay no problem yeah let's talk on, on good things yeah yeah let's you know i you i know you can control that so no more of that all right you scared us don't do that yep. all right okay. Um, okay well ron listen man i uh i appreciate it as always man um i appreciate your friendship i appreciate all the support you've given me in the show over the last couple of years too man you've been a big supporter big fan and when i get messages from you about the show and that you like something it means a lot to me um I know a lot of guys, especially the last episode from North Catholic, uh, tuned in. Hope they watch this. Uh, you know, Falcons, Ronnie Smith truly, truly shows that Falcon never dies, man. It's good shit, my brother. So All right, thank, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Charlie. All right, man. Take care. All right, bye. This has been the Bear Essentials. Thanks for listening. And remember, never hibernate on your goals.